welcome to Advancing AI. We've got episode four, and we are. This is part of the AI Agent series. James, welcome, uh, welcome again. And we're going to be talking about tool calling. We most definitely are. Yeah, really excited to get into it. I definitely think that tool calling is maybe not the the sexiest part of agents, but definitely the most fundamental, key, and widely used of all the different sort of frameworks and patterns um, that get used in in agentic uh, systems. So today, we're going to be talking about how we implement tool calling. Now, we're going to do this in Databricks, and you're going to show us just how to do this, right? Under five minutes, I'm sure we can get set up, but there's other cool stuff that you're going to show as well, James. Yep, definitely. All right, let's get that notebook added. Yep, so we're back here in Databricks, um, and we're going to do something a little bit different from previous videos that you'll have watched in this series. Uh, previously, we were accessing um, OpenAI directly through Azure. Uh, this time, we're going to be using Databricks Langchain. Now, the only difference here, if you're following along at home, uh, not in the Databricks environment, is we're just using a different connector to our LLM. Look, it's all within Langchain. It will all fit within the exact same ecosystem. All the rest of the, the Langchain code will be the same. We're just accessing our models directly through the the Databricks model serving endpoints rather than going off to an LLM yeah. provider instead. So we get cracking here to uh, get started with our tools. I've just done some installs and uh, restarting our Python just so that they're all definitely refreshed and running. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do, uh, do some imports. So we're just going to be working with Langchain Core today. Um, and we're going to set up some really basic tools. Yes, Gabby. Cool. But before you do that, could you could you just zoom in ever so slightly? Of course. How oh, maybe a bit much? How is that? That's brilliant. So this is the most That's important part. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Go ahead, James. Excellent. So, Gavi, as you said, um, yeah, tools can be uh, can be simple, can be very complex. Either way, they're incredibly yeah. fundamental. We're going to be going through some very basic tools today, just to get to grips with you know how they work and how you can implement them they can get a lot more complicated than this. The crux of a tool is basically any deterministic code that you can yeah. write in a function, you can use as a tool. Cool. Um, and so the ones that we're gonna be looking at today are some very basic ones, solving a quadratic um, equation and solving a Pythagoras theorem. Um, so yeah, we just got these two very basic uh, Python functions. Uh, these have a little description at the top. But you'll also notice that at the top of them, I've got this little tool decorator, uh, which we've imported from Langchain. And yeah. basically what that does when I hit run on this is <coughs> it captures these two functions as tools, uh, which gives them a couple of extra little powers. So they're not just Python functions anymore. Um, they also, you can see down here, have attributes to them. So if I run this cell, you can see, yeah. for example, that our solve quadratic function has a name, a description, okay. and args. Um, and these have all been sourced from this little doc string here uh, and what gets passed into it and the name of the function. Cool. So that basically allows our LLM to, uh, to understand what does this function actually do? When do I need to use it? Uh, what might I expect back? Um, and yeah, it just allows your LLM to better understand the tools that you're providing. So I'll go ahead and I'll uh, quickly run through this. So we'll set up our LLM. Again, we're using Chat data, Databricks. You can use any Langchain uh, LLM connection here. Um, we're giving it a little prompt. This is just a really basic one to say that, you know, you love helping with people with math homework. Um, yeah. And we are putting together our agent. So we're creating our React agent. If you remember, we discussed that in previous episodes, what React agents are. Uh, and we're giving it our LLM, a list of tools it has available, uh, which is our two that we just created, and our prompt, which again is just saying, you like helping people with, the, with their math homework. And that's it. We're pretty much, we're ready to go with our tools. So shall we see them in action? Yeah, let, let's see them in action. Yep, great. So the first one we can ask is, uh, how many real roots are there for a quadratic equation uh, with these values? Uh, so ordinarily, you know, if you just ask an LLM, it'll give it a good go. And, you know, for a question like this, especially these days, and it'll probably get it right. But again, these are very basic tools, very basic functions. It can get a lot more complicated than this. So if I hit run on this, 
we'll see it think for a few seconds. And because we're in Databricks, MLflow is kind of wrapped up into, uh, into everything that happens. So we'll see the nice little UI come out. Uh, and we can see that it started, it ran the agent, and then the agent called a tool. Uh, yeah. And then we can see the outcome at the bottom here. Uh, you can see that we asked the question. Uh, the assistant went off uh, and called our solve quadratic tool nice. uh, with these input parameters. Uh, yeah. And the tool said, according to our deterministic code, there were no real roots. And so that's what our assistant has said. There were no real roots. Cool. I mean, so from what you've just shown, right, based on the prompt, the system understood which of those tools it really needs to be going, going away, looking at it, and using it as a function to solve that equation, right? Exactly, yeah. So it went off, it looked at the question, and yeah. it said, OK, yeah, I'm being asked about a quadratic equation. It assessed the tool that it had available, and it saw that there was one available called solve quadratic. And the description was, you can use this to solve quadratic equations. Love it. And because now, it knew what the arguments were, it knew what to pass through. Now, have you been in a situation where you've got loads of tools that you've defined up front here, James, and it gets in a bit of a pickle? It's like, oh, I'm not really sure what tool to be calling here. Uh, what, what, what would it do in, in that instance? So have you ever faced a situation where it, you know, it, it doesn't really know what to do because you've got too many tools? So you definitely can have that issue. You can also have the opposite issue where maybe you haven't labeled your tools clearly enough and mm -hmm. it ends up choosing none of them. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is just another thing to consider of when you're working with a lot of different tools, that description is very key because it will essentially be taking the question and looking through all of those descriptions and deciding which one, if any of these suits. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I mean, yeah. it will think it knows better. Sometimes you need to make sure it's definitely using the tools. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely something that you need to tailor. I mean, I, I love the way MLflow, you know, it's, it's, it's so transparent, right? You know exactly, for example, it's taken 3.92 seconds to do that for us. And you know mm -hmm. exactly how it's even gone away and which, which of the tools that you've defined there, James, it's pulled through. And, and that's really, really cool. Yeah, and you can even see what's going on a bit more under the hood. Um, you can sort of see all the messages. You can see uh, the amount of tokens that have been used, things like that, um, and all the different run IDs and the tool calls and, yeah, what it passed through. So, yeah, you can really see every single step of the way uh, with this nice oh. ML flow wrapper. I've got another question here because we know certain LLM models, right, are, are better, are stronger in terms of solving mathematical equations. Could we then define for each of those tools that you have just defined there, James, could we allocate a different LLM to solving Pythagoras, for example, and choosing another LLM to solve your quadratic equations? So definitely, uh, as you start to build this out, and especially if you move more towards more uh, modern and sophisticated approaches like Langraph, for example, you can start assigning different LLMs to different nodes That's and different uh, agentic subsystems within your wider framework and yeah, yeah you can start tailoring LLMs which are better at this or better at that if you know that one function is incredibly mathematical heavy the other is very natural language heavy yeah you can definitely start using different LLMs for different purposes um, and start bringing them all back together cool um, yeah so that was an example of us running our quadratic tool uh, we've also got our, our Pythagoras tool it'll be very much the same thing you know we can we can run it with uh, What's the third side of right angle triangle with these two attributes? Yeah. Uh, it'll just go off and run in exactly the same way as the previous one did. Uh, and you can see if we click on our, our final result, uh, you can see it called our Pythagorean, our Pythagorean theorem tool, yeah. uh, passed through three and four as we told it to, uh, and it got that the hypotenuse is five, uh, which, is brilliant. Great, which is brilliant. I could have given you that answer far quicker, James. <laughs> Well, would you be able to do it as quickly as this when we start having multiple questions? Absolutely, uh, absolutely, James. Of course, yeah, I shut up a doubt. Right off the top of your head. Exactly. Um, I've got another really important question here because what you've shown yeah. is really, really cool. But what if you have a bunch of uh, AI engineers uh, or Gen AI engineers or scientists that wanted to test it, out, test it out before productionizing the different tools? How is that an easy way within Databricks to do this? So there definitely is, Gabby. Um, so we will see in just a moment that you can actually start to package these tools up. They don't just have to live within your notebook and be defined every single time. Uh, you can actually write out a tool, 
you can save it into your Unity catalog in Databricks specifically, and then you can start to cool it down in other notebooks or especially yeah. in the playground environment. And that's mm -hmm. when you can really start to compare uh, how different models interact mm -hmm. with the tools, how different yep. versions of the tools generate different responses, and you can see them side by side, all synced up. Brilliant. Um, so I'll just run this final little um, message here, which is essentially just showing how the tools can work in tandem. So here we have one question, which is asking for an answer. Uh, and then the second question is taking the previous answer and sticking yeah, okay. that into a follow-up question. Nice. Um, and you can see here that it works quite nicely. Um, the, the answer to the first question comes out um, as five, and then that gets stuck in as an argument to the second question. A second tool call occurs, and then we get a subsequent answer um, based on that. So you can see how these yeah. tools can start to yeah. be called sequentially. Yeah, so it's it's really great stuff when you can start to chain these together. As we'll see in the future, this comes in, and as we've already said, this underpins pretty much all the other uh, agentic patterns and comes up quite a lot. Um, and that brings us to, as you said, Gabby, what we do with these tools when we want to use them in other environments. Yeah. Uh, so we can save them to Unity Catalog, and it's as simple as this. So we can set up our Databricks function client, uh, which is just an import from a library. Um, we can, again, I'm defining my uh, solve quadratic tool here. Yeah. We don't we don't use the tool decorator when we're saving it to Unity Catalog. We just treat it as a function. Uh, so yeah. I've got my doc string, and it's the exact same code inside. So I can just run that. And then all I have to do is say my catalog, my schema, and I just want to save it out. And there we go. It's now Brilliant. in the Unity Catalog. Fantastic. So I really want to see this in action in the playground. Yeah. Shall we go have a look? So yeah. I will zoom over to the playground. Yeah. So, so the playground really gives gives users a really easy way to test different tools that we've defined and saved to the Unity catalog. But also, like you say, right, James, you can also use different models to compare you know, how they perform against a particular tool. Exactly, yeah. So if I actually uh, quickly hop back over to my notebook here and go and grab my quadratic question. Yep. I'll just have that on my clipboard. So yeah, we you can see here, as you said, you know, there's loads of models available. Uh, some of them yep. come with Databricks sort of uh, built in. Uh, others yep. we have connected. So for example, this is our GPT-4.0 that we were using. This is yep. our served endpoint directly through to Azure OpenAI. Nice. Um, so if we have uh, Llama, for example, uh, we can go into tools here. And yep. because we just saved our, um, our tool out to Unity Catalog, you can see that we have a couple available here, and here it is, Solve Quadratic. So I can just select that, oh. have it on the, the toolkit roster, uh, and that's it. We're good to go with it. So I can just type in that question here, and it will go off. And you can see it used our, our special tool, and it came back with an answer. Or well, it's com currently coming back with an answer. Um, and we can also, as you say, Gary, compare things side by side. So if yeah. we want to see how Meta uh, Llama handles that, we can also see, if we re-add our tool over here, we can see how GPT-40 handles it. And we can ask it with this little sync thing enabled. So we can ask them both at the same time and see what they come back with. And this is, yeah, really how you oh. can start to use this Playground tool to compare different, um, different models and their performances. Yeah, and you know, as we said, these tools that we're working with, they're very simple. They're just very straightforward mathematics. Yeah. Going forward, you might have very large, complex tools and uh, functions and systems within your business that you need to make sure you definitely get right every time. And you can yeah. do, use this sort of playground environment to make sure that different models are or maybe aren't performing as expected with those tools. You can have, uh, you have all sorts of uh, functionalities. These are mathematical. You can use tools to call APIs. You can have yep. them uh, act as retrieval services into like your VAG frameworks, for example. Yep. So yeah, yep. basically uh, any already existing AI use case can be accessed by tools as part of a wider agentic system. Yep, cool. James, thank you so much for your time today. I'm already looking forward to the next episode, James. So can you give us a sneak preview into what we're going to be talking in the next episode? 
Well, as I said, you know, tools are probably my favorite part of Agentic Frameworks, and they're such a big topic that we're going to be going into tools again, uh, but we're going right. to be looking into slightly more complex tools. We're going to be looking at tools that do API requests and handle a bit more lateral thinking, and that's going to be a bridge to a future video about planning Agentic systems. So it's all going to link together. Uh, would you mind sharing your notebook again, James, so that people can get started really quickly, right? In five minutes, they can run your notebook and get a feel in terms of how they develop their own tool, tools within Databricks. Of course, yeah. It's all going to be made available on the GitHub. Right. Thank you for your time again. Catch you in the next episode. Brilliant. Cheers, Gabby.